This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Hi, I'm Cindy Harris. Welcome to the Photography Guild. Today we're going to be talking about food photography. And this is something that I do practically every day of my life because of all the cooking podcasts I do, I have to take what they call a money shot. And that is the best possible way to show that particular dish that I've cooked. So whether you're interested in taking um, photos of food when you're traveling, maybe you want to take photos of dishes that you make for yourself and put them into your cookbook, or even if you really get into it and want to start uploading them to some of the um, photo houses that are available online, these are some of the tips that I can give you so that show you how I get the kind of shots I get. Now there are a number of things to consider when you're going to start photographing food and the first thing I always think about is what am I going to set the food on. So let me show you some of the go-to pieces that I use. The first one is a white plate and um, you can go square, you can go circular, whatever you like, but you can see that it really, with this pomegranate sorbet on the left, it really makes that sorbet pop. It's a great go-to piece. The second one is if you tend to photograph baked goods, a couple of different cooling racks are kind of nice. Now this one here on the right, um, this is a blueberry muffin I made and I have it on a round, uh, shiny metallic cooling rack. It provides a really cool look. I liked the way the lines worked um, in the shot. The next thing that's handy is to have a bread basket that you can either put a towel or a napkin in. It looks really natural, really homey, and it's a nice piece to have on hand. Another one are some small colored plates. Um, Sometimes you can get interesting ones with designs on them, but you have to be careful that it's not, it doesn't look too busy in the shot. But I actually find these little saucers, um, they have some really pretty colors, and uh, depending on what I set it on and what the color of the food is, it can also make for a really nice shot. Another couple of pieces that are really good to have on hand are platters. Now this one on the left is really interesting. It's actually metal and it's in the shape of a giant leaf. It comes in really handy. I also like to keep my eye out for some interesting bowls because when I'm photographing soup or stew or chowders, things like that, I like to have something besides just a plain old white round bowl. So keep your eyes out for that. But remember, you don't have to buy a whole set of them. You only need to buy one. Then I have to figure out how I want to plate the food and I'm always looking for ideas in magazines and catalogs and online, see what other people have done. These are some of the ones that I've come up with. Um, On the left are patterns. Now these were little cream puffs and you can see I just sort of lined them up in a sort of pattern. That can be pretty effective. Whereas on the right, I had made some cinnamon shortbread and uh, I just stacked them up and I thought that was kind of effective. Now, if you photograph breads, um, you can slice it and actually show a slice of the bread coming off, which is kind of nice. And then another really fun thing to do is actually cut into something, whether it's a piece of cake or a piece of pie, or in this case, it was a Boston cream pie cupcake. And I wanted to show um, not only what it looked like on the top, and those are the ones that are behind it, but I wanted you to see that there was that vanilla cream in the center. So I cut a little wedge out of it and that way the viewer can sort of get a bird's eye view of what's inside that cupcake. Now sometimes you'll want to have a little bit more in your shot besides just the food on a plate. So here are some of the things that I use. Placemats and runners are really handy. On this shot on the left, uh, that pretty fabric is a runner and I like it because it just kind of goes out in all directions, almost like a tablecloth, but it's not as much fabric as a tablecloth. I also like to use uh, placemats and runners that are things other than fabric like wood or bamboo. They can give some really interesting texture to your shot. 
cloth napkins are also really handy. They give a great hit of color. And instead of putting them to the left of your dish like we would at a regular table setting, what I did in the shot on the right is I actually folded into a large rectangle and then I set the bowl of soup right on top of it so you got this nice splash of color. When I'm photographing breads, um, sometimes it's nice to have a really interesting little butter knife. And on this shot on the left, I actually had the butter on the knife and then I laid it on a piece of bread that I had already cut off the loaf. So that makes kind of for an interesting look. And then if you're doing any kind of baked good, cookies, brownies, muffins, a glass of milk in the background always looks great. Another great prop are using the ingredients that are actually in the recipe that you're photographing. So for example, this shot on the left is tangerine sorbet. And so I went out and I actually clipped off a little fresh tangerine off my tree in the backyard. Now, if I hadn't done that, you may not know, is that orange? Is it mango? I'm not sure. But because I have that little tangerine in there, you least get the idea that it's some kind of citrus. So that's kind of interesting. The other kind of prop that um, is fun to use, it can be tricky, you have to be careful, are utensils. I have a love-hate relationship with spoons. Sometimes I can photograph them and they look great, and sometimes I don't like them at all. In this photo on the right, this was actually a chocolate souffle, and uh, you'll notice that wooden um, piece on the bottom, that's actually a wooden placemat that I love the texture of. And then I wanted to show how the souffle was served. So I included that presentation in the photograph as well. Now another thing to consider is actually including the dish that you cooked the recipe in in your photograph. So here on the left, um, these were some sour cream chicken enchiladas that I made. And so I thought it might be interesting. I found the enchilada itself to be a little I don't know, lackluster. So what I did is I took the dish, the baking dish, put it behind it up on a red cutting board, and then now it gives a little bit of interest. On the right, what I did is I had multiple servings of these spaghetti and meatballs because this is what we were having for dinner that night. And as I had them laid out, I just thought it was so interesting, the shapes of the uh, dishes and the way it kind of my eye went back and I thought, oh, that was kind of a cool setting. So again, if you have multiple servings of it, see if you can arrange them in such a way that it really looks cool in your photograph. Now, one of the more critical elements to food photography is lighting. And um, if possible, the best lighting you can get is natural lighting um, where you're near a window. Now, in these two shots, um, I actually staged them in, in my house. The one on the left was in front of a window in the back of my house. I had this great hydrangea plant that was growing, and that's those little purple and pink buds that you see. But all of that light was flooding over that barbecue naturally. It was fantastic. Then I have another spot in my house, which is up on the island that I cook on. And in the afternoon, that sun comes in. And you can see it's just backlighting um, that bread beautifully. So look and see if you have a window that would provide some nice natural lighting for you. That's really the best. But I have to be honest with you, I can't always do that. Sometimes I have to photograph at night. So here's what I do. I have two photo lights that I set up and um, both the salad on the left and these cupcakes on the right are examples of shots that I took at night and this is how I did the lighting. What I do is I have one light on the side of the dish and then I have another light around the back that's backlighting the dish and then I'm kind of in between the two and you can sort of see especially on the salad you can see that light coming in from the right and then on the meringue on those cupcakes you can see that light coming in from the left but I find you really need to have two to get the kind of lighting that it requires. 
Backgrounds can also play an interesting part in food photography. Um, on this photo on the left, um, what I did is I was photographing these caramel cupcakes. And what I did is I took a piece of green poster board. And I have white poster board and a light blue poster board and all kinds of different colors, even black. And uh, what I do is I light it from underneath and what you find is you get this almost like a soft box type of look and it can be really effective. So poster board's not too expensive and you can sometimes find some cool colors. It can provide a nice little background for you. The other thing I've started playing with is photographing things kind of nestled up into flowers. Now what I did on this shot on the right is my father-in-law had given me this wonderful bouquet of orchids for Easter. So what I did is I took one of my tall canisters that had a nice flat lid and I put that muffin right up top and used the orchids as a background. Now it's time to think about composition. And when you're photographing food, there's a couple of things you wanna really keep in the forefront of your mind. The first thing is you wanna shoot it at eye level. So if you look at this flan shot on the left, I'm not way up top looking down on the flan. I'm actually kind of mid eye level shooting it. It helps make the food look a little bit more attractive. The other thing you want to do is like I did on this shot on the right, these are some roasted beets. You want to fill the frame. Now that's a concept we talked about in Composition 101 back in episode, I don't know, one or two. But filling the frame is really important. You can see because I filled the frame with those beets, you can actually see the circles in them. You can see the little flecks of pepper. So it's a really good composition tip. Now let's talk a little bit about our camera settings. I always shoot my food photography in aperture value mode. I want to control the aperture. And uh, the reason is I find that the, having a shallow depth of field looks really, really cool. So what I do is, uh, like for example, with these chocolate whoopie pies, I singled out one of the little whoopie pies and then I clustered a bunch of them in the back but that first one because I went with a shallow depth of field is crystal clear then the rest of them kind of blur out it's kind of a cool effect now these last two tips are things that I do in post and the first thing I always do is look to see can I brighten the photograph at all. Now if you're shooting in a raw format you have a lot of control. You can control the exposure, you can brighten, you can um, in enhance the highlights. There's a lot of things you can do but definitely look and see if you can brighten your photo anymore. The other thing that's really fun to do is play with the tilt in your photo. Um, now, I was doing a lot of photography for wines, and on this one, I just loved having that wine bottle and glass tilt. Now, I can't do that in the real world, but I can do it in post. So see if sometimes tilting and exaggerating your angles looks interesting. Now, as for the gear, um, the lens that I usually use is just my all-purpose 18 to 55 millimeter lens. The thing I like about that lens is it lets me capture a large dish if I want to, or I have enough of a zoom in it that I can get a partial sh uh, shot zoomed in, and I like the clarity of it. But I sometimes play with my macro lens too, so you can try either one, see what works for you. In terms of settings on the camera, you're usually shooting inside, so you have to go with a pretty high ISO, about 800 is what I shoot at. And then like I mentioned, I like to shoot in aperture value mode. I like to have a shallow depth of field. So I have my F stop between um, a five and an eight. Now, if I were to go and stop it down to say a three, um, I'm fine that I don't get as much clarity on that front part of the photograph, which is really important with food. You need to have some clarity. You don't want it to look fuzzy. So between an F stop of five and eight seems to work for me. 
So your assignment this month is to go out and shoot some food. And when you do, do make sure to upload your photos and share them with us on our Flickr group. And the way you can find us is just go to our website and go to the Photography Guild show notes and then there's a Flickr button. You click that and it'll take you right to our Flickr group. We have some amazing artists on our Flickr group. In fact, we have uh, one gentleman that we're going to be featuring in our next electronic gallery showing. He takes the most amazing photos of guitars. You are definitely going to want to tune in for that. For more information on this episode, go to our website and visit the Photography Guild show notes. Also, if you have any questions or ideas, send us an email. Thanks for watching.